It was strange seeing Damon just turning up out of the blue. He looked so different, as if something terrible had happened to him. I feel bad, but I'm not sure how best to help. I always used to think of him as the strong one, the leader. He went on to be so successful, have a family. I, I didn't think I'd ever be able to be like him. Time is a funny thing, though. I actually have found something that, well, really might change my life. My writing. Never thought anyone would be interested in it, really. It was largely just part of the therapy. But now it's changing everything. Changing fast. Then there is Nomi, of course. I really need to appreciate her more than I do. Part of me, I guess, though, is still hesitant. Still afraid that all this change might just be too much. This is Red Moon role-playing. I am uh, gripped by, by panic, but I try to push it down and stuff. Sorry, I, I guess I was just excited to see you. I, um, hey, uh, I, I went by your place. Um, I, I wanted to see you. <laughs> Bad timing. One of the few times I was actually away from home. Uh, I think someone tried to break into your place, man. Wait, what? Oh no! Really? Uh. I, I start getting very agitated. I start thinking, someone's broke into my house? What have they taken? I have things that are important. And you see me looking visibly agitated. Uh, I, they left something. A, a message. There was a note. What? A note? I I, I, I followed them and I, I left a, the note back in, at your place. Um, let me show you. Okay... And I feel very strange. I'm actually quite happy to see Damon. I don't know why I have this aversion to him touching me, though. I guess maybe he just came on too strongly or something. I can be like that sometimes. Still, all right, I nod and look at him and go, Well, I guess you can give me a lift. Yeah, C come on, get, get in, let's go. All right, and I'll go and get into the back of the car. As he gets in, I, I sit down and I... Uh... I start the car back up and uh, begin driving towards uh, Peter's place. You uh, take the car, and uh, Damon uh, starts uh, driving you back to your place, the familiar route that you've been going many times. And Peter, you can't help but see that Damon has a bandage with a bit of blood seemingly still not having completely dried on his Finger. So I sort of sit back, being still a little surprised to just see Damon turning out of the blue, coming over and driving me back home. I see the injury on his hand. I fiddle with my suitcase slightly, because obviously I've just come back from the airport. Damon, you uh, cut yourself there. That looks quite nasty. Oh yeah, it was uh, an accident while I was cooking. Um, but I'm I'm really happy that that you 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 you're here now. Um, I don't know how much we, we really talked since. Uh, well, things have been happening, you know. Uh, well, of course, uh, that's all right. I know you have your wife and kids, your family. It was nice to see you at the signing. That was a year ago now, though. Um, what brought you down to South Fed? You didn't come all this way just to see me. You should have rung. Yeah, no, I, I, I was here to see my... My, um... My grandma, uh, actually. Uh, so the kids were supposed to come as well. Uh, me and my wife are, uh... Well, uh, temporarily separated. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, it's, uh... Temporarily separated? Oh, no, Damon... What's happened? It's, um... Uh, I don't really want to talk about it right now, but... It's it's bad. Um, my job right. and, and, and everything, it's just all kind of falling to pieces. And I just need to not think about that right now. Um, 
which is why I just wanted to come and see you and, and talk about what's going on in your life. And maybe you can tell me some stories from, from this trip you've been on, huh? Well, certainly. I guess that would be fine. I kind of sit back a little quite confused. This is all a lot of news for me. You try to find your words to where to start with a trip, but suddenly you're just outside your house. Uh, here we are. Uh, let's, um... Let's go inside, huh? I nod. I'll go and get my suitcase out of the car, and I'm suddenly very anxious. I want to get inside quickly. I get my keys, go to the door, open the door, go inside, and just start looking around very quickly. I'll know if things have been moved, what looks like it's been disturbed. As you come into your house, it's more of a question what hasn't been disturbed. And you see that everything has been lined up in perfect order. All the books on the shelves, all the papers have been sorted. Everything looks at the apex of cleanliness. It's as if you hired a professional cleaner to make everything just look nice. It looks fantastic. It's never looked this nice before. Damon, when you said someone had broken in, did you, like, tidy up afterwards? You didn't have to do that. Uh... This was not how it looked when you were here, Damon. Possibly in the bedroom, but you never went there. Um, well, I did, I did try to clean up a little bit, I guess, but did not, not like this. No, someone else must have been here. What? So you're saying someone's broken in and tidied my house. That's a little different, I'll give you that. A little different. Damon, as you look around, you feel almost as if uh, there's a shimmer around things. And uh, I would like you to roll for Cursed now on this first session of this adventure. Five. All right, well, that gives me... A few holds. You basically realize that you found something, didn't you? You packed your pockets. Yeah. I, I do. Did you uh, want to relay that? Or uh, you just told Peter that you cleaned things up? Yeah, I, I did. Peter, what do you say to this? Thanks, Damon. It's nice that you did that. You didn't have to, though. I'm starting to get quite anxious again, and I rush to my room, and I'm like, you know, I had things in my room a certain way. Did you say the person was in my room? Or where did you think they'd broken in? I don't see any broken doors or windows. No, it, it was your room, yeah. Because I think so. It's a bit of a blur, but yeah, they, they were in here. I could hear them, and I rushed after. I, I thought it was you at first. Um, but it wasn't, and, and, and I followed them out into the rain, and, um, and they left this note behind. Well, hang on a minute, I'll have a look at that in a moment. I rush to my room, and I imagine, again, it's all been tidied, yes? Yes. It looks fantastic. It's like the bed sheets have been washed. I don't like it at all, actually. I get very anxious. I go to my computer. I quickly start checking the spare drives. Is everything there? They haven't taken it. Nothing's missing, is it? All hardware is there. Do you turn it on? Yes. As you turn it on, ask for your password in regular order. And... Uh, The same phenomenon that seems to have happened in the rest of your house is the same here. All your folders have been neatly organized, all your files, all your ideas have been nicely placed, and uh, it's all almost perfectly ready for you to start working with it. There's even a blank notepad document open. I'd like you, at this point, this is our first session, to roll for Stalker. Seven. And I'm not happy. I feel something is wrong here, and 
they got into my computer, they got past my password. I quickly go and click on my telnet connection, which has a bit more encryption, some more secure passwords. Is that all still working? I'm not going to properly log on, but I'm very concerned that someone has completely accessed my computer and looked at everything on it. Which isn't exactly the end of the world, but some of the stuff's private. It seems like if they have been able to get through that encryption, they haven't shown. You can see no trace of it. In this place, the things are as normal. This is your deeper archive, and this is your collection of gathered stories, gathered pictures, obscure things that you found on the dark net. Is that not right? Exactly. Some of it isn't very pleasant, but, you know, it's for research purposes, and I keep it closed up. Besides, my agent's seen a bit of it as well, so I know, you know, I make sure nothing actually illegal is on my computer. Damon, as uh, Peter has rushed up to his office, the uh, chairs in the living room look very inviting. There's also a bottle of whiskey on the shelf. I move to sit down. They're nice. It's comfortable here. It's a nice room. You you don't feel like you're at Peter's place, except you are. And there's that little trinket that reminds you of him. And it's almost otherworldly sitting here, seeing it like this. I just sit and take it all in. And I... Just try to process it. Waiting for him to... Yeah. To give me some answers. Well, eventually I come back down and I go to the phone and I say... Alright. Uh, okay, I'll, um... Ugh, fuck. Alright, I'll call the police. We'll get them over. You can give a statement. Uh, did you get a description of who the person was? I... Someone has been in my home. I mean, this must be some sort of joke, or maybe it's a fan. I've had one or two weird fans, although breaking in and neatening everything up is a little bit strange. Um, I go and get the the note that I had left in the in the room, unless you have uh, you have seen it already. This is what they left behind. And uh, Damon, as you as you take out the note and about to hand it over to Peter. Uh, you all it says is one sentence there's no picture anymore it says you should kill yourself do you give that to uh, Peter I see that that's not what it said that's not what it said someone switched the notes uh, and, and you can see it I suppose Ooh. I should show it to you this is not what it said Someone's been here afterwards. I look at the note. What does it say? On the note, it, it's uh, a list of uh, groceries that you were going to buy. I think you got uh, this mixed up, uh, 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 Damon. Are you sure this is the one you wanted to give me? I look at the note again. It says you should kill yourself. <sighs> It's not the one, no. No, 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 this is not the note. It was something about a shield, and... I, let, let me go and see if I can find it. And I go and, uh, and I look, this isn't the note. Uh, no, it must be some other note. I start making a mess. He starts rummaging through your things there, Peter. Damon, maybe have a seat. Uh, sit down. Uh, you seem a little unwell, uh... I know that's a weird thing for me to be saying, but uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe you lost the note. What did it say then? What did the note actually say? You tell me. And I, I think I remember what the note said. What did it say? You're not really sure. There was a picture of a knight and a shield, and there was something about that he was supposed to protect 
something. Nothing about not forgetting what he was supposed to protect. Right. Uh, there was there was a man in armor, a uh, knight. He had a shield. And it said to not forget that which you were supposed to protect. I look at you, clearly having no idea what you're talking about, but I sort of nod as I say. Right. Sure. Very interesting. It was a message to you. They, they came in here to leave that message to you. And now, and now someone has been here and the message is gone. And then and, and they just left this this message for me. And I look at the note again and probably still says to kill myself. And it's bullshit. It's all lies. All right? All of it. Okay, well, what I'm going to do, let's have a drink in a minute. I'm going to call the police, get them over here. I fully agree with you that someone has come into my home, and I'll be honest with you, I don't like it at all. And we'll get something on it. Ah, I was looking forward to coming home. Now I don't know if I feel very safe here. Someone could just walk in. I need to get new locks, a new alarm system. I've been meaning to sort out my alarm system. You uh, grumble to yourself as you uh, walk over to the phone and... Oh, there's a missed call on your caller ID. There might be a few of them, but this latest one is a number you definitely recognize. It's from Gabriella's house. It's not the first time she has called you as of late. You've been... You've been meeting in between her travels and you're quite used to her dropping by at your place, even without calling. Uh, some uh, something uh, met with an odd curiosity from Noemi. Or have you told her at all that Gabriella drops by? I have. From time to time? I'm not the yeah. sort to keep secrets like that. It would make things weird. And I don't want them to be weird. I've told her that Gabriella's an old friend. I haven't really fully disclosed that. I don't really know how I feel about her. But I've been honest as much as I can. Yeah. Maybe not telling her all these times that Gabriella is trying to get you drunk and get you in bed just for cuddles or the things that she enjoys with her friends, with everyone, really. Yes. One thing about Noemi is that she never seems to find jealousy in her heart, but the idea of putting her and Gabriella in the same room... I don't know. You're standing there, looking at the number... Well, I guess I'm going to see if they've left a message. You do. And uh, your answering machine starts. There's a silence and then a hang up. There is a call from uh, your dad. He wants to see you when you're back. And uh, nothing from Gabriella. But... um, You know how she is. If it was her, she'd call you back in an instant. And uh, she'd ask you what was wrong and then probably advise you to have something to drink and find someone decent looking to share your bed with. But still, she would always listen and she would always give advice and always call back. She's always been there for you, for old friends. Well, I think uh, she's going to have to wait for the moment because the police is going to have to be the first one. I need to get this sorted now. I don't feel very safe. I don't really know what's going on with Damon. He's acting very strangely. I mean, this is a break-in, but it's a very strange break-in. I really am starting to think it's some sort of joke. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I'll call the police. You call the police and you describe the situation to them. They uh, are asking questions about if something is missing or uh, if uh, something has been destroyed or anything like that. I tell them the truth. It's a bit strange, but I think someone's been in my home. I don't think they've stolen anything exactly, but it's still as unsettling and they have definitely been looking at my things, moving things around, 
I also have a friend who says they saw someone coming in and they chased them off. So there was definitely someone in my home while I was away on holiday, and it's a rather disturbing matter, and if they could look into it even a little, I'd feel more assured. And they'll ask to talk to you too, Damon, see if you can make give any description at all about the person. And uh, do you tell them anything specific? It was dark and raining, I couldn't quite see. And they'll let you know, Peter, that... Uh, they will have a look into it. They'll have someone come by and uh, so that you can uh, show them what exactly has happened. Uh, and uh, it doesn't actually take incredibly long for someone to get there. Just a patrol car with uh, people that you can show around, two officers. And you show them that your house has been cleaned, I suppose. Exactly. I mention that I'm going to get working on a better alarm. I've been meaning to for years, and now I'm finally inspired to do it. I just didn't think this would be why I upped my security. And uh, they think that's uh, not a bad idea. They encourage it, and they uh, leave you with uh, letting you know that they'll have a look into for any similar activities in the area and uh, see if... uh, they can come up with a better description of the perpetrator and until then make sure you close everything and keep everything uh, under extra lock and key. And as the hours pass and finally the police leave and the matter is sort of dealt with for now, I'll finally go to my drinks cabinet where the whiskey I assume was taken from, yes? Yes, it's uh, the bottle is no longer dusty. Hmm. All right. All right, Damon, let's have a drink. This is a strange homecoming, to be sure. Would you believe Gabrielle rang as well? Oh, she did. How do you feel about Gabriella now, Damon? I don't know. I... It wasn't that long after we spent time together that my life started falling apart. I... Part of me wonders if all of this is happening as punishment for, for my little slip-up. I don't know. But she's a friend, though. She's still a friend. Nothing's changed, I tell myself. That's great. I hope we get to see her soon. Yeah, you do. And as you uh, pour the whiskey, the uh, pitter-patter of the rain throughout the day once again starts falling in thick grey sheets, shrouding the lights of the small town and sending everyone scurrying for shelter. You uh, start having your drinks, and do you talk of anything specific? Do you tell uh, Damon anything about your trip, Peter? Well, a little bit, I suppose. I just seem very preoccupied with what's just occurred. I say, well, this isn't exactly the sort of homecoming I was expecting, Damon. Makes me feel I was wise to not go on holiday in the first place, you know? Uh, Yeah, I I know what you mean. But hey, tell me more, and I, I try to like really pump you on information about your trip, just trying to get you to tell every little story that you you can about everything that you experienced over there. Just just keep you talking, and just just to keep me from having to confront anything that's happening right now. Just to keep me occupied. I'll do my best, but to be honest with you, it's a slightly stilted conversation at times. The truth is, this is the first real major holiday I've had for many, many years, and I don't even know what to say about it. A lot of it was, for me, how I felt. It's strange sharing it with Damon, even though he is a friend, and he just, something seems very off, and eventually I will lean over and be like, Damon, what's going on, friend? Something's up with you. This is, you didn't just come, why did you come to see me in the first place? Because I need to have something to hold on to because I'm... And I've had a couple of drinks at this point because I'm disappearing bit by bit. And I show my uh, my hand. Everyone I love is being taken away from me and everything I love, my job, my career, it's all gone. And, and, and it's, it's taking me. I don't know what it is, but... I don't know. It sounds crazy, I know. 
you uh, find yourself uh, flicking through TV channels as you talk uh, half idly, almost as just to keep your hands occupied. There's nothing interesting on at all. Well, Damon, sometimes it can certainly feel that that's the way things are going, but it's not always accurate, you know. I... Sorry, you have to give me a moment. I don't even understand how this all even started. You were fine when I last saw you. You've been fine for years, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I was. I'm not anymore, though. And, uh, yeah, I I pour up another glass of whiskey and I'm starting to become more and more drunk. I don't exactly stop you. It's not as if my own drinking has been curbed sometimes with the few things that gives me a moment of relief I'm going to eventually say hang on let me go get the phone and I bring the phone into the room it's one of those portable big portable ones I should probably call back Gabrielle she did ring something tells me it's not a coincidence can you imagine if all three of us same room <laughs> that's been a long time yeah yeah you feel Peter that With the drinks and the constant showers of the rain, the black and white sitcoms on the TV and all the jet lag, the travelling behind you, you you feel not necessarily tired, not necessarily restless, but that sort of limbo in between where you don't really want to do... Well, where you want to do something, but... Inspiration is slipping through your hands. Damon is here and acting strangely. And you bring in the phone and... Yeah, well, searching for anything rewarding to do feels like you're just back in the old town. Well, it's hard to say if it's nice or not. It's a bit dreary, that's all. It's strange. And again, part of me feels I'm only doing it because I'm, in a way, still shocked that someone's been in my home. The whole place doesn't feel the same anymore now. It's like my sanctuary has been broken into. Yeah. And you feel no real need to go back to London and know me. You have some pages jotted down from your travels with ideas, but they're not really ready to put into something yet. Especially now that you have to go over all your file systems again. Damon, you feel like you're fighting an invisible wall. Something that's just keeping you from where you want to be. And your finger is stinging as you're clutching the glass. The rain and the coming darkness gives you a sense of defeat. As you sit there with the phone, though, the suffocating monotony is suddenly broken by the ringing of the phone. Eager to shed the gloom that threatens to engulf you. Yes, you probably pick up the phone. And you hear the excited voice of your old friend, Gabriella Pirelli. Hello, Peter. It's me, Gabriella. You'll never guess what happened. I just got a phone call from Madrid. Can you believe it? Madrid. Some lawyer guy just called me to tell me I've inherited an estate over there or something. Something I've lost. You know, I've got this long lost uncle and I'm his only living relative. He's sending me an airline ticket and a couple of thousand dollars. A couple of thousand? I want you to come with me. Right? Please, I'll pay for everything. I promise I can't bear the thought of travelling alone. Please say you'll come. You're in town, aren't you, please, Peter? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa wait, is that, is that why you rang? Yes, yes. See, I got this phone call from Madrid asking me to come down, paid holidays, take over this estate, whatever this uncle has, anything, and, you know... What do you say? We go down there, we get tanned, with any luck, I may even fall in love with a handsome matador. Well, I mean, I don't know. Well, well, Gabriella, well, first of all, I'm here with Damon, actually. He came to visit me. Damon's there! Hello, Damon! Damon, you hear her voice echo through the uh, receiver. And I sort of yell, thinking that she will hear it. Hey, Gabriella! Hey, Damon! 
Oh, David, you gotta come as well. I'm gonna get, like I said, it's a couple thousand dollars with this airline ticket. I'll pay for everything, I'll swear. Oh, the three of us, can you imagine it? I mean, Oliver is not, he's not gonna come, is he? And Sophie is away in Italy, isn't she? So it could be the three of us. We go on a holiday in Madrid. We'll catch some tan. We'll have some drinks. I can discover my secret routes. Um, maybe we can even meet your family, uh, Damon. I don't know. Yeah, l- let's go right now, I say, not realizing how impossible that is, but let's go right now. Right, Peter? And you find yourself sort of sharing the receiver. I mean... It's a little bit sudden. I've just come back from a trip myself. Oh, have you? Where have you been, Peter? I was around Nepal. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Oh, you have to tell me all about that. Nepal. Did you take any photos? Oh, you have to show me. Well, y- but, y- y- but, you oh, know... Oh, 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 we- <laughs> Gabriella, calm down a little. I also just had my house broken into as well. I literally just came back home and some people broke in. Have did they take anything? What about your writing? No, no, they didn't take anything. I think it might have just been I don't know, like someone just sort of stalking around or trying to freak me out a little or something. What a bastard. I bet they're trying to take your ideas to write their own books now that you're doing so well. I mean, they might be, although I kind of want to tell them that's not exactly how writing works. You can't just steal a couple of pages of notes and make a good story. Oh, that's true, of course. No, you've got to have your magic fingers in it, don't you, Peter? Oh, your magic fingers. Right. I'll tell you what. How about we talk tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I mean, he says he was calling this morning. I'd, I'd never known I had an uncle before this morning. So there we go. He's going to send over the ticket. I don't know how long that's going to take anyways. He said he's going to be some express letter. So it might be coming tomorrow. But then again, the tickets wouldn't be for tomorrow. So I bet you have a few days at least. And now you mean um, I'll get your tickets whenever you want to come. So you can have a few days. You change your locks. You get whatever you, alarm system you need and then we'll go right it's it's strange the whole entire situation is very surreal to me but i do actually find myself saying sure yes why not i guess yes yay now you twos are gonna come with me we'll catch some tan get away from what must be the worst august in the history of rainy British Augusters. Yeah, tell me about it. I, I can't wait. It's going to be just like old times, huh? Yeah, just like old times. And I hang up and I just sort of look towards Damon. Once I've hung up and say, Well, that's a thing. And I just sort of stagger back to um, to the chair and I... I feel my how I'm getting very very sleepy. I'm just, uh, well, that's great. Um, look, man, I'm getting I'm getting tired. Are you actually able to go on a? I mean, are you actually able to go on a random trip about your family? Yeah, I, I, there's nothing keeping me here. And I kind of let it fall there. I get up, not really seeing you out. I almost don't think you're going to leave. And that's okay. I go to my room. I start looking over my things. I'm thinking to myself, I need to move. That's why uh, I'll call I'll call Jacob, my brother. Uh, he, he was meaning to get this place sold. and I don't like it here anymore. I don't like it here anymore knowing someone's been here. So maybe, <laughs> maybe another trip to sort that all out. Would be helpful. I don't even know. I don't even know why I said yes. Why would I say yes? Why would you say yes? <sighs> it's hard to tell at this point. Is it the time to go away when you've just been away? But then again, this is completely different. This is... This is with Gabriella. This is with Damon. Damon seems terribly troubled. Your old best friend. If he's going... Like this. Maybe. 
maybe you should take care of him. If things are going so good for you, and they're suddenly taking a dive for him, what would he have done if it had been the opposite times? What has he done when you've been down on your luck? He'd have tried to help me. He definitely would. So I suppose maybe he's seen where he wanted to go. I don't know if it's a good idea for him, but I guess all I can do is try. And again, a little part of me feels it would be nice to see Gabrielle. Oh no, why am I thinking like this? Uh, it's just the way she's so infectious with her speech. It's like it's almost like she made me say yes. She could always make me say yes to things. Most things, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, you've uh, managed to keep your integrity so far. It's one of the few things I have managed to keep. All right, then. I I, I want to be away, I think, while this is going on, and yes, all right, let's go. And I almost start secondhand thinking about (laughs) an uncle. What uncle? What place? That sounds a little bit... (laughs) sounds like the sort of thing I'd read in a book. One of the books I'd write, in fact. All right. I'll, after thinking to myself for quite some time, pop out my room again. Damon, you all right? I imagine I've fallen asleep. Right. Right. All right, then. I guess we're going to go on a trip. And I'll go and help myself to a bit more whiskey. And just have a little poke back on my my computer forums. Just checking in. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the campaign The Judas Grail for Cult Divinity Lost. The Judas Grail was written by Gary Fay and was published by Tard Games in 1996. The music was made by Atrium Carceri and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody, dark ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon. Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Ludwig Manford, and Bob Lang for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, this show would not be possible. If you want early access to our content, and to hear raw versions of our recordings right after we've done them, or join a campaign of Cult Divinity Lost as a player, please check out our new higher level tiers on Patreon. It's a great way to get more Red Moon roleplaying in your life, and to help us keep the show going. Thank you again for listening, and remember, death is only the beginning.